This video is going to introduce you to cascading style sheets. This is going to reinforce what the book discusses, as well as help you set up your FTP and your documents and your folders to prepare you for uh, cascading style sheets. It will also help you conceptualize what is happening in the files and in the browser it's cascading style sheets or CSS. Cascading style sheets are where we are going to be styling the entire all of our design elements for our page or the styles uh, for our page. The HTML is reserved for the content for the most part. I always have to say for the most part. The style sheets are where we are going to be doing all of the styling, the design elements of our page. Okay. This will require us to be working with two separate documents simultaneously. So far, we have been working with the portfolio.html independent from the index.html, right? Uh, we've, but we've been, we've had those two, but they haven't really been interacting at all. I mean, we link from one to the other, but they're not really doing all that much. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be using two documents simultaneously that the browser will then combine together to present your web page. So right now we have on the left side here, we have a, our, let's say portfolio, portfolio.html. Okay. And we've got all the code, right? Just what we were doing you know, in here. We've got all our code for our portfolio and it displays uh, very nicely on our screen. Okay. We are going to be creating another file that we are going to call main.css. Right? It's our main CSS document. Just like HTML pages have this HTML extension, style sheets have the .css extension. And these two documents are going to work together to help or to display our web page. And the way that this works is with one line of code. This line of code right here, which goes into your portfolio, I'm sorry, your portfolio.html page this code goes into here what this does is it connects these two documents together and what happens is when the browser gets to this line it says oh look this person has a style sheet that's awesome let me go find it okay and where do I go to find it? And this here is the location where you go find it. Okay. And if you recall from our images, right, our images had a very similar kind of setup where the source for the images had a very similar kind of structure. It had something like this and then the file name. And if you recall, this was the folder. Okay, this was a folder name, and we, we are going to be creating a folder on our computer called styles, which we will then put onto the server, just like we've create, done with our images, uh, excuse me, our images uh, folder. We are going to have that show up on the server.
right? And we are going to put this main.css in that folder. So we are going to create our main.css and we are going to put it in there and we're going to put it in there. I have to write the name for that out. Okay, we're going to name it main.css just like we named our other ones portfolio.html and so on and so forth. We name that one CSS, main.css. And when we upload it to the server, zoop, that main.css document will be there as well. Okay. So in our web design folder, we are now going to have our two HTML files. We'll have our images folder that has all of our images in it. We're also going to now have a styles folder, and we're going to be putting our main.css in that styles folder. Okay. And our server will replicate what we have when we start uploading everything. And the reason why we are doing this, and we're calling it styles in main.css, and that's pretty standard, although the book calls this folder CSS, you know, you could call it whatever you want. I prefer using the word styles, um, and I'd like you to use the word styles as well, uh, so that I can help you find things if, if things are not showing up properly. I, you know, I'll, I'll know that you, you have that. And we're going to be calling it main.css because that's pretty much the default name for the primary style sheet uh, that people are using. And so what happens is, like I said, when the browser reads your HTML file, when it gets to it, you type in your URL slash portfolio.html or somebody clicks on the link in your web page and opens up the HTML, it comes to this line of code which we are all going to put in there. Link rel equals style sheet, follow quotation marks. You know, you write this line down. You're going to be putting it into yours, uh, into your page. It's going to say, oh, you have a style sheet. Okay, let me go look to see if you have a styles folder. It's going to say, is there a styles folder? Um, is there a styles folder? It's going to go look for it. It's going to go look to see if you have one. It's going to say, is there one there? And if it does, great. It's going to be very happy. And then it's going to say, oh, look, I'm looking for a file called main.css. Is there a main.css file within that? Yes. Yes, it's going to be very happy. And then what the browser will do is it will display on this page the styles that you have coded into your main.css. And that's why we, that's how the browser uses two separate documents to create one web page. Now you could, as I'm sure it says in the book, put all of your styles in your portfolio to HTML. And people do that. I don't know why, but they do. The reason against doing that is because one CSS document can be applied to hundreds of individual web pages. And if you put all of your style sheets in this page itself, you would have to replicate that every single time you created a new HTML page. And you would have to make hundreds of changes to that style sheet code in this document. Instead, we put all of the styles in one document, and then we have one line of code that, that we can put in multiple pages. And we're going to put something like this on our index page, we're going to put it on our about page, we're going to put it on our contact page, and so on and so forth. And then this document will apply to every single one of those pages. It's really like, it's magical. It's really a wonderful, wonderful system. Um, that they've created here. All right. So this is the structure. Okay. This is how we understand how these two things are working together. And we need to be able to visualize and understand 
that you are working with two documents now simultaneously to control the content and the design uh, of your website. Now, the book is very good. Um, Ducket is very good at explaining uh, the introductions to CSS and how this all works. Uh, we are going to be, and some of it's a little complicated at first, um, in here, we're going to be uh, focusing on color first and then later um, font and typeface. And, uh, and then we're going to get into more layout positioning and those kinds of things. Let me show you how this works a little bit on the fly so you can get a feel for it as you're going to be doing it. Okay. Now, first things first, we need to open up our FileZilla. And just as we created our images directory in our web design folder, I would like you to create a new directory in here and call it styles. Okay. Remember, all lowercase, no space after the word styles. That will cause headaches later on. And make sure you put your S on there too. Okay. And we're going to create that right there. I'd also like you to do the same thing on the uh, server side of your FTP. Okay, you'll see I already have one here because I've been doing this for many, many years. But I'd like you to, you know, right click, create new directory, and create your styles uh, folder. Okay, once you have done that, go to brackets, and I would like you will see right here this line of code that I have added and discussed in the Photoshop, right there. Same exact line of code is right here. In fact, I just took a screenshot of it and opened it up in Photoshop for that little tutorial I just gave. Now you will notice that this appears in the head section, right underneath my title. I've noticed many people have start, are putting like bold in here bold print and stuff like that in their title. Uh, if you, those of you who have, if you look at the little tab at the top of your screen, you're just going to see those little bold tags appearing. The title does not get styles. It doesn't have a style associated with it. It's just what appears in your tab. So you just put your name and, and then you're good. As I've said in the past, we're eventually going to start adding things to our head section. And that is what we're doing right now. We are adding a new line of background information, doesn't display on the page, tells the browser, look for your, oh, there's a style sheet, look for a styles folder called main, look for the file called main.css. And this is just some code just to tell what kind of file it is, just reinforces it. Okay. So pause, pause the video write this down and add it exactly as written to your portfolio.html page. Make sure you have your equal signs, your quotation marks, everything is lowercase. There are no spaces between equal signs and quotation marks. There are spaces between quotation marks and new words. Okay, these spaces are required. Take some time to add that. And then from there, we create a new document, File New. And we're going to File, Save As. And I'm going to go to my desktop where my web design folder is. And you can see, on my because I've created my styles folder, I see that in here. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to save it as main.css. All lowercase. No spaces anywhere. Okay, main.css. I'm going to save it. Now, one thing that you could do if you have the uh, you have the ability on your screen is you can create a vertical split um, under view and then vertical split. And some people like to do this because it allows you to have the two files next to each other simultaneously. 
So I have my portfolio.html on the left, and I've just dragged my main.css down into the right area over here. Now we're going to focus on colors right now, very uh, briefly. I'm not going to take too much time. But generally, every single HTML tag that you have on your page can be styled in a variety of ways, in a variety of ways. Okay. So the body can be styled, head cannot, HTML can be styled, body can be styled, section, header, all of your headings, paragraphs, header rules, figures, images, lists, list items, all this stuff can be styled and the book can help you do all of that, okay? If you look at the index of the book, there's a wonderful index in the back. The last page of the book is called CSS Properties. Helps you figure that out. It's really quite, quite wonderful. Okay. I am going to just show you a couple things. I'm doing this on the fly. It's going to look terrible. This is why we are doing a design persona, so that you won't be doing this on the fly. Okay. So right now, the body of my page is it's white, it's fine. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep it white for now because um, I, I just I want to keep it that way. Uh, but I want to style my name. I, I don't want it to be this. I want to change the color, maybe the background color of it, let's say. And I also want to style the color here and some other things. And we're just focusing on color for now because that's what I'm asking you to do uh, for homework for this for this uh, that goes with this video. So if I want to style my H1. I write this as H1, and the brackets I'm using are these little curly braces. Okay, this corresponds to this. Okay, you can see they're exactly the same. We call this a selector. Okay? And in the book on page 231, he goes over the names for all this stuff. This is called a selector. Just like in, in HTML, we have these little carrots that we use. In CSS, we use these curly braces. And those are above the return key. You have to shift on most keyboards, and you get those little curly braces that are above the square brackets. Um, sometimes students will just type in these little square brackets. OK, that is not correct. Things won't work. You need your little curly braces. Okay. And there's a way to do clean coding here, and we'll, we'll show you how that works. Now, if I want to change the color of this H1, let's say I want the color to be, I can type in color, and I'll change it to, you'll see that all these different colors come up. Now, these are the default colors in HTML and CSS. You can type in any of these words. You can also use your color wheel to choose a color. Let's say I want a dark bluish purplish thing for my name, but something that will look like you can see that it actually changed. Let's do that. I can copy this hex code and I can go to brackets. I can say okay over there. And I can type pound sign, hex code, semicolon. Right. This whole portion here is the declaration. Okay. You can call it a rule. This is the line of code that is going to tell the browser to do something on my page. Okay. Make my h1 tag this color. And what's nice about brackets, why I love to use it, if I click on it, it will show me the color that it's going to be. Beautiful. Notice that after the property, this is the property, after the property, you must have a colon. Okay, you must have a colon. And after the value, whether it's a number or a word, 
you must have a semicolon. A missing colon will cause your page to look like spaghetti. A missing semicolon will cause your page to look like spaghetti. Okay, you must have those. And I'm also going to give it a background color. Oops. Background color. And let's say I just want to make it a beigey. I'll call it Burley Wood for, I don't feel like going back to my color wheel. Boom. So now I expect my H1, Bill Wolf, to be this blue color with a background of Burley Wood. Okay. So what I need to do is I file, I save it. Okay. I haven't made any changes to my portfolio.html that I'm aware of, but it says that I have. So I'm going to save that also. Now I have to go to my FileZilla. And this is where things get a little tricky. Just like we were uploading into an images folder, we are now going to be uploading into a styles folder. Okay. But just the style sheet. So I'm going to refresh. I'm going to upload my portfolio.html because I made changes to it. Then I'm going to go into my styles folder. And I'm going to see my main.css in there, which I created. I'm going to open up my CSS here. I've got old CSS files, so you can just ignore that. I'm going to drag that across, upload it. Then I'm going to go to my browser. And I, my expectation here is that this is going to turn blue with a background color of that brownish, really whitish color. There it is. There's the change right there. Two lines of code, and I've got color on the page. Again, hideous, but this is just sort of showing you how things work. Okay. Now I can go back to my brackets and I could say, all right, I'm done with that. Now we're not working on positioning, we're just practicing with the colors right now. Colors and background colors. I can say I want to change the color of my H2. And I'm going to give that a color. And I'm going to make that blue violet. Okay. I can do the same for my H3. And I'm going to give it a color. And again, I could go back to Photoshop and get my color wheel out and everything like that, but I don't. I want to take the time to do to do that. I'm going to give it a dark magenta for this one. Okay. And maybe I'll give this, and then I'm going to go to my paragraph. And I'm going to give that a color of orange in there. There we go. I'll just give the color orange um, and so on. Okay. Now I've just made those changes and I saved it using the uh, shortcuts. Um, I've styled my H2, my H3, my paragraph. This layout, brat, brat, curly brace, little indentations, lines all lined up, curly brace ends, opening, closing. Now you can notice that when you click on your curly braces, it highlights it for you to tell you that everything is opened and closed, opened and closed. And if you're missing one, right, the, this will turn red and you'll say, oh, something above it is missing. Where's my closing curly brace? And you'll click on it and it will turn red too. So you just say, okay, I need to pop it in there. I'm going to save, I'm going to go back to my FileZilla, refresh. Upload, say OK. Go back to my browser, refresh. And now we can see that that turned purple, that turned orange, and that turned a different kind of color. And it's over here also because I've styled now both kinds of, both because I styled the H3, I styled it once over here, but it will apply to all instances 
of my H3. We'll apply this one, and where's the other one? This one over here. Okay, it will apply to all the instances of that. Okay. And I can do the same with my lists and so on. Um, let me show you one other thing. I will now style the body of my page. And I'm going to give that a background. Background color again. And let's say, just going to give it a dark, sort of a, a light gray. And okay. some light gray color, just so you can see it, see the change. Save it. Back. Fresh. That's it's hideous. Oh my gosh, it's so ugly. Um, but this is this is again why we are doing our design persona so we can work this out ahead of time. Um, now I can go back and change. Let's say I do want a gray, but I don't want it to be that CCCC. I can op open up Photoshop, get my color wheel. Let's say I want like a blue gray, something like that. Copy this. Go back to my code. Pop this in there. Save it. Refresh. That's a little bit nicer. Um, my experience is students like to overdo with the color at first, and then we gradually remove color, remove color, remove color, and we go back to our sort of, um, we'll start looking at our sample portfolios again. Obviously, this is impossible to read right here, so what I'm going to want to do is go back, and maybe for my paragraph, I'll just put that 000, which is black. Um, you can put all six in there. When you have six that are the same, you can shorten it to three. Uh, that is black. Um, maybe what I want to do is something fun here just to show you. I, whoops, I can. Oh, we already did the background color over there. So I'll just save this. Um, I did notice something here, and this is something that's important to point out. Um, you'll notice that there's this little. I copied this text from someplace else. Uh, it, and it brought this little curly brace, little curly quotation mark with it. You need to make those quotation marks square, or else it's going to give you a little error. We'll see in here, well, it's possible to see, but there's a little error right there in the, in the text. Now, it's important here to know is that I just made changes to the portfolio by fixing this and to the CSS by changing the color of the paragraph, correct? So what I need to do now is I need to upload both. Now it is very tempting, or the, a mistake that often happens is that we wind up putting our portfolio.html file in our styles folder. Okay, we do not want to do that. We always need to make sure that we are putting our files in the right place. So now I'm going to click back on web design, and I'm going to double click back on here, and I'll upload my portfolio into this area. And go back and refresh, and there we have our text changed and so on. And so this is how CSS works. And be very careful about this. You're always uploading your HTML into this area over here and just in the main public HTML folder. When you want to update your styles, you double click on that, you double click on your styles, you drag it across into right here. And you go back, clicking on those little dots to where you were before. So. Good luck with this. Um, have fun with it. It's, it's the beginning of the design portions of your page. Uh, we are starting with something very slow just by 
and envisioning the way the style sheets work. And by starting with color, uh, by next week, you're going to be doing a whole lot more. Um, so have fun with it and good luck. And if you have questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, I want you to make sure a couple things when you are doing your work, if things are not working, I meant to say this a little earlier. If things are not working, okay? First, did ask yourself these questions. Okay, one, did I save the file? Two, did I save it to the right folder? Okay. Is it in your web design folder? Is it in your public HTML? I'm sorry, is it in your images? Is it in your styles folder? Is it in the right folder? Three, did I upload it to the right place or the right directory, I'll say, or folder? Okay. Did you upload the file to the right folder? Is your HTML file in your styles folder or is it not? Okay. Um, those are the primary questions that you should be asking yourself right now. Okay. Now, if you have a style that is not working, like you see most of it, but something is not working. Um, are the colon and the semicolon there? Like, are you using the colons and the semicolons effectively? Okay. Did you use the curly braces properly? Okay. That is, um, are they opening and closing? Okay. So go back and check that out. See if those are the things that, if, um, if things are not working, did you save the file? Did I save it to the right folder? Did I upload it to the right folder? Are the colon and the semicolon there? And did you use the curly braces properly? For now, that should be uh, where you are, should, should be able to help, based on where we are, that should be able to help you out with your errors. And, you know, I guess another one to pop in there might be uh, when a you know, are you using all the workings throughout? Could be an, an issue with capital letters someplace. So those are the ones. Um, if answering, going through those questions, things are still not working, shoot me an email. Happy to help. Uh, good luck. Have fun. And looking forward to seeing what you do. Have a great day. Bye-bye.